Okay. Well, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started at the top of the hour here. Uh, I have a very special guest today, Natalie Strelke. Uh, if I'm saying that correctly, is that all right, Natalie? That is correct. All right. I got I got lucky. That's uh, but I'm glad I did. So Natalie is the national product manager for Yokogawa's compensating capillary system, and she's here to talk to us about this. Uh, Natalie, this is my new favorite pressure product. I'm going to go ahead and uh, introduce just a little bit about what it is, and then we're going to let you really dive into the meat and potatoes. But um, why are we talking about compensated capillaries when it comes to differential pressure uh, level measurement? Well, basically, this is something that Yokogawa has done that's unique to the entire industry. Um, they, you know, if, if everybody remembers the equation back in high school, how temperature is directly proportional to pressure. Um, that's clearly going to have an effect on your pressure reading when the temperature changes. Um, so essentially what we're, what we're saying here is when the sun goes up or down and you have a DP system with fill fluid on a tank outside uh, or when it becomes summer or winter, anytime the temperature changes, the fill fluid with normal systems is going to expand or contract and that's going to cause an offset in your reading, in your pressure reading simply because the fill fluid changes how much it's pressing on the pressure sensor diaphragm. Uh, and, and that's how normal systems work, but not ours. Now our fill fluid changes size, it expands and contracts just like everybody else's. So when the temperature goes up and down, uh, the fill fluid is going to change in volume. But what we do with that change in volume is different than, well, everybody else. Um, Natalie, let's let's go ahead and explain a little bit about how we compensate. I know there's a couple different ways that we we implement this system. Can you talk to us about this? I think this is called the freestyle system, right, with the direct mount on the on the high side. Yes, that is correct, Andrew. So um, hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, so yes, when we're looking at this uh, system here, uh, Yoga Gawa calls it the freestyle system. But really, this is just an unbalanced, what we call an unbalanced system where we have a direct mount on the high pressure side of the tank. And then we have a capillary that runs up to the low pressure side of the tank. And um, yes, with typically with an unbalanced system, as you can see here, um, if you look at the, the image to the left there, um, when we, when this, uh, if this application is an outdoor application as an example, and maybe it's maybe it's 50 degrees in the morning and by the middle of the afternoon it's 85 90 degrees um, we will see uh, some shift due to the change in ambient temperature and that is caused by two different things one is as andrew mentioned the expansion or contraction of the fill fluid and with the heating up of the fill fluid it's actually going to expand and it's going to that fill fluid has nowhere to go so it's actually going to cause a back pressure at the uh, at the connections there and will and that will that offset um, will the the expansion can only go so far on the seal itself so that offset will um, transfer back to the transmitters diaphragms and be seen as an offset now there's another effect going on called head effect and that is the low side has more fill fluid than the high side, and it's also mounted above the transmitter. And so what we get is we get a offset. Um, and you can see this, typically you'll see an offset when you have nothing in the tank. You'll see like, why is it reading negative 100 inches of water? And that's because there's, there's a fill fluid from that low side capillary pressing down on the low side of the transmitter and consequently causing that offset. Now with the change in, when you have a change in ambient temperature, not only do you have the expansion of the fill fluid, but you have a change in the specific gravity of that fill fluid. So you're no longer getting that same exact head pressure of negative 100 inches. It might not now be negative 104 inches or negative 102 inches. Um, so there's a shift because of the change in specific gravity as well as a change due to the expansion of the fill fluid. Now, when you look at the image on the right with the sun shining on it, um, the way we compensate for this is what we call our compensating capillaries. And it's, so instead of just having that single compensating capillary leg running up to the low side, we have a, another uh, leg 
that's coming off the high side of the transmitter, running all the way up to the low, almost to the low pressure side, not coming quite up to the diaphragm itself, but coming up as close as possible to that seal to basically balance out this entire system. So instead of just having the low pressure side um, having the effects due to temperature, the high pressure side is also seeing that same shift due to the, the temperature shift. So basically it's just, um, basically what you get is it's equalizing the volume of fill fluid between the two sides of the transmitter and allowing for that ambient temperature balance between them. And so that's where we can come in with our compensated capillary and basically eliminate those shifts. Now it's not 100% perfect as you can imagine. Um, there's not exactly, it's not exactly the same. And there could be some changes because of, there could be just some errors because it's, we can't make it 100% perfect and equal, but it's going to significantly reduce the amount of offset you're going to see from that type of ambient change from, from say, morning until in, into the afternoon when it, when it gets really hot. So, Natalie, I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, this, this is, this is the, oh, I'm sorry, that's the dual compensated. Um, this system here, you're absolutely right, is not perfect, and we don't claim it to be. Um, throughout the presentation, we're going to have three real-world examples, however, that show how it is better. Um, and and the, the factors here that we're, that we're talking about, how when the sun hits the low side capillary, if you don't compensate on the high side as well, you're going to see how the differences in accuracy can be uh, pretty astounding. Um, so we're going to get to that in a moment. Um, now, Natalie, this is the direct mount high side. This is the freestyle system, Yokogawa calls it. Uh, and this is how they compensate uh, if you wanted to do a direct mount on the low side. Uh, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, this is best if the temperature of the process is pretty constant. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that is correct because this system is, <clears throat> this system is really compensating for ambient temperature swings. It's not really compensating for anything to do with the process temperature swings. So, but Natalie, how do we compensate for process temperature swings? <laughs> oh my goodness, what is this? this is, so, so this is the next product. This is the dual remote seal compensating capillary. Natalie, can you tell us a little bit about how this is different? Yep, so what you're looking at here is a representation of what we call our dual compensating capillaries. And so basically the difference between the one you just saw and this one is that we're taking it a step further. So this is like that tier two compensation um, strategy where we are actually compensating for both ambient and process temperature changes. So what you see there, uh, you can see like the, the blue, I think is representing the low pressure side, the green is representing the high pressure side. So you've got your high pressure side on the right there and you can see the green fill fluid that goes all the way up um, to the diaphragm uh, surface there. And then you can see a blue that's right kind of underneath it. And in between those two is a conductive plate so that even though the compensating capillary is not seeing the actual process temperature, um, the two are connected um, thermally via that conductive plate so that the low side capillary, compensated capillary does see that same process temperature. So that way we're able to get basically a full compensation, both from an ambient standpoint and from a process temperature standpoint. So this is the, I like to call this the grand poopa of <laughs> solutions for li liquid level applications, because this is actually taking away all possible errors associated with any kind of temperature change. So that's- Yeah, this is definitely, um... The, the high class recommendation, um, you know, but and, and we're going to go into some examples, but this this works anywhere. I mean, if you and and, and we'll go into the specifics, but um, I wanted to point out one more thing uh, that Natalie was mentioning. So you see here how the fill fluid interacts, the low pressure side and the high pressure side fill fluid, they interact. What that does is when the fill fluid expands and contracts, 
either because of process temperature or environmental temperature, um, what you what results is you have constant pressure on both sides of that diaphragm. Something that's unique about Yokogawa's pressure transmitter is that 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 pressure when the when the volume changes and you have more pressure on both sides of the diaphragm, our transmitter will pick that up as a difference in static pressure, and that is an independent variable from differential pressure. So even though the, the fill fluid will expand and contract, it will cause a change in differential pressure. You will not see that, or I'm sorry, it will cause a change in static pressure. You will not see that offset in differential pressure, so your level will not have that offset. Uh, and I, I think the dual compensated system is the most clear way of showing that. So just wanted to... Just wanted to mention that. Um, yeah, Natalie, and of course, we've, we've done this um, in, in different parts of the world. So here's uh, an example. Uh, Natalie, I think you worked on this one, right? Was this the chemical company in Houston? Correct. So <clears throat> this was a company down in Houston, um, a large chemical company, and they had a very specific application. Um, it was actually a gravity-fed blending application where they had problems with their current solution because they were trying to increase the yields um, and increase the efficiency of their blender reactor level application here. And basically what they needed was very tight control because they needed to control around 95 to 97 percent uh, at 95 to 97 percent full capacity of the tank. So if they tried to control too tightly, um, if they tried to go all the way up to 97% and they, they got an offset because of ambient temperature, they could overfill their tank, right? And so mm -hmm. they were looking for an app, they were looking for a solution that would allow them to run at 95 to 97% of level of max capacity of the tank um, and, and to, to to maximize the efficiency of the application and to get the maximum profit. So um, the, the, the product they were making was they wanted a really high yield to maximize their profit in basically. And so they actually installed two um, dual compensating capillary systems. They had one on one side of the tank and one on the other side of the tank um, on this reactor and they were able to get um, absolute, you know, really, really good uh, performance out of these two systems to be able to control at that 95 to 97% to maximize their yield and get the most profit out of this, out of this unit. So um, it was a huge win for them. I mean, a huge win for us too, to prove out this concept. Um, now, most customers probably won't spend the spend the big bucks for this type of thing. But when you when you're making a product that has such high profitability, it's definitely worth it, worth the investment. So did they put one system on the sunny side of the tank and one on the shaded side of the tank? Is that correct? That is correct. And they got such good um, accuracy between the two of them. Right. They were at they were. Yeah. So, they were reading so close to each other that they they had confidence that they could run at that 95 to 97 percent. So that's pretty amazing. I mean, so because the process temperature is probably a little bit different on the sun side versus the shade side, maybe not that noticeable, but maybe. Yeah. And and that would cause I, I can imagine all sorts of things where that would cause offsets if you didn't compensate for the capillaries. Um, and yeah, right. they certainly the I, I remember you mentioning the the product they were making was expensive, so it was absolutely worth it. So, yep. Cool. Cool. Well, um, thank you. So I, we've we've gone over the freestyle and the dual compensated capillary, and these are those are the compensated capillaries that are unique to Yokogawa. Uh, we also do have just normal differential pressure with remote seals, uh, but we do something a little bit unique there. Um, we 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 environmentally compensate this temperature compensation that we're talking about. We do it with everything, and the, even the ones that are "quote unquote" the normal ones. Um, Natalie, can you talk about the environmental compensation of every DP remote seal that we do? Yes. So, um, you know, whereas most 
most companies, what they will do is they will they will do a characterization of the transmitter itself. And the characterization process is pretty simple. It's basically they run it through different process temperatures and they build what we call a characterization curve. And they use that characterization curve do, during operation to correct for changes in temperature. Now, Yokogawa does something a little different. We actually, once we, we do a characterization of the transmitter, but then once we attach the seals, we put the entire system back into an oven and we run it through its paces again, through all the different, basically the full range of temperature. And we rebuild that characterization curve with the seals attached. So what that allows us to do is get much better performance under changing temperatures. Um, and, and that's why we call it the environmental compensation because we're really compensating the that system for changing temperatures. Um, and, and really the temperature measurement is made at the sensor itself. So it, it might be a little bit of a combination of both process and ambient, but it's gonna give you much better performance than you would get from just a standard transmitter with remote seals that hasn't been run through that secondary characterization. So most of the competitors, they are only characterizing the transmitter, but Yokogawa is characterizing the entire system. When, when we sell the whole system, remote seals, capillary tubes, uh, you know, fill fluid and the transmitter, is, you're saying all of that's characterized? Correct. Yeah, okay. And that's just on envi that's environmental compensation. Um, on top of that, I know we can offer these compensated capillaries, but that um, probably provides a very big difference in, in overall performance. I know that the spec sheets can, can say different things and they can talk about the accuracy of just the transmitter and sort of leave out the fact that they haven't compensated for fill fluid. Um, but I, I believe our spec includes the entire system, doesn't it, when you, when you order it that way? Correct. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, Yokogawa is extremely conservative when they spec their products. So keep in mind that even though they may say a certain specification in their in their literature, they're probably going to be a margin of five to 10 X better than that because they're cons extremely conservative. Wow. Um, yeah. OK. Um, that, that's good to know. Sometimes conservative to a fault. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, um, so this is another real world application. Um, and this was one that happened in my territory, actually. Um, so this was a liquid processing company and they had a critical application. They're trying to monitor for a gas leak. So just take a look at some of these statistics. We had a static pressure of 1200 PSI and they're trying to measure a gas leak. So their measurement span was about six inches of water. Uh, it, it was a challenge uh, nonetheless, but we, we ran it through our, uh, our system to see what accuracy and what specs we would get. And here's some of the information that we got. So we ended up going with a freestyle compensated capillary, main reason being the process temperature didn't change too much, but the big concern was the ambient temperature. And the customer, when we listed our reference accuracy of 0.664%, the guy called me and he said, are you, are you, are you sure? Is that really your accuracy for the whole system? And I was like, yeah, yeah, we stand by that because we, we put it through our, that, that's what it is. And he, he shared with me that he had looked at competitive uh, DP technologies, one of which was, and this was what they were gonna go with, was heat traced capillaries. So sometimes what competitors do is they'll put heat trace on the capillary tubes to try and keep that fill fluid at a constant temperature. Well. For a, for a number of reasons, they also list their reference accuracy of the entire system at 7.5%. Um, it, it simply was incomparable. I mean, our, our accuracy was so much better and, and the customer is familiar with the repeatability of our, of our transmitters as well. So they ended up going with us. Um, another thing that they considered was electronic DP, but uh, electronic DP couldn't handle the high static pressure of this application. I'll just remind you again, it was 1200 PSI. So uh, we were the the only fit uh, when you looked at all the numbers, and um, so far they're pretty happy. And so, yeah, that's that's an amazing application, Andrew, to be able to measure at that high of a static pressure and 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 be able to measure six inches of water. I mean, that's that's border that's borderline 
what you know anybody is capable of doing with a, a remote seal. So yeah, you know it's it, it's pretty crazy. Um, and and you're right. So one one reason that we're able to do that, I feel, is uh, is the DP harp the transmitter itself. So yeah, when you're at that high static, and this is a good point to bring up, when you're at that high static and then you wanna measure six inches of water, it's really hard to get any type of resolution because it's such a small change and the, and the pressure is already so high. One unique thing about DP Harp, and I mean, we, we could make a whole presentation on just the transmitter itself. Uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about characterizing the entire system. Let, let's talk about the transmitter for a second. So the DP Harp transmitter has a unique resonance frequency sensor. And what that means is when, you when you're trying to measure this six inches of water, your measurement span of zero to six inches, our sensor has 40,000 uh, hertz of frequency within that four to 20 span. And it's pretty mind blowing to think about, but so within that four to 20 span of zero to six inches of water, we have 40,000 counts of resolution. And that's how we're able to get this reference accuracy. And, and that's one of the reasons that this product is so fantastic is that not only do we have a temperature compensated system that accounts for fill fluid, accounts for process and environmental temperature changes, the transmitter itself is, is fantastic in that way, in the resolution. Um, th there are some other things that we could say that this transmitter has three separate outputs and measures for three separate variables. So you'll get the differential pressure, which is your level. You also get a static pressure reading, and you can also get the cell temperature, the temperature of the of the uh, the cell of the of the transmitter. And all of those variables are dynamically compensated within each other. So when you see a change in static pressure, it doesn't have to affect the differential pressure. Um, so the, the, you know, the, there's a lot of things we could talk about. Natalie, I'm sure, could do a full presentation on just this. Uh, and she's very well well versed in that. We we might do that in the future. Um, but Yokogawa's DP Harp, the pressure transmitter itself, is their number one selling product worldwide, and I, I believe the number one pressure product sold worldwide. Uh, and then the sensor, I think, is the main reason. So, Natalie, was there anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I I did want to mention just a little bit about the static pressure piece because I I think there's a misconception that, well, you know, so what. Um, well, this is a big so what because, you know, when you're, we've got a transmitter out in the field and we've got changes, maybe seasonal changes in static pressure, um, you know, maybe you've got a uh, pump that's on its way out and it's not performing like it should. And so the, the pressure drop is more substantial that you might, might see um, just from minor, minor things. But, um, you know, that static pressure change can cause <clears throat> a big shift in other devices. Whereas with the Yokogawa transmitter, we are continuously, we're doing a, a, a continuous dynamic compensation. Um, we are compensating that transmitter for any change in static pressure. And you don't think about, you know, like a lot of, a lot of people will say, well, so, so what? Again, why is that so important? Well, for some customers, it can be a major, major thing. So as an example, we had a customer, pretty major um, oil and gas customer, um, where a salesperson went in and he started working. He was trying to get some Yokogawa product into the door at this major, major customer. And he went and, and started going unit by unit. And he, he got one unit changed over and basically what was happening was the people, the operators in, from unit to unit were kind of talking to each other and they were no longer seeing the zero, they were no longer having to go out and re-zero transmitters. And frankly, some of the operators at the one unit that had the Yokogawa transmitters were a little frustrated because they weren't really getting any more overtime in having to go out and, and do these re-zeros. And so, but the word kind of spread throughout the plant and slowly but surely the units started switching over. I'm sure as unit, you know, transmitters fail and stuff like that, that they would go out and swap them out with Yokogawa units. And this is, this is kind of one of those situations where, you know, just because it's something you've always done doesn't mean it's something you should have to do. In other words, 
just because we go out and re-zero these transmitters all the time doesn't mean that that's something we should have to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's that's where it's like that those savings can really add up if you're talking about, you know, a, a plant that has eight to 10,000 transmitters in it. I, I mean, if you don't have to go re-zero them every, you know, three to six months, that's a big savings mm -hmm. that we're talking about. That's not minor. Yeah. Um, um, so, so that's something just to keep yeah. in mind that, you know, we, we really do outperform. And I think that's why, you know, when, when we get a customer that can try out a Yokogawa transmitter, you know, a lot of times they just, they, they immediately see the, the difference, right? But you have to try it to see that. I mean, it, it might look good on paper, but until they try it, they don't really experience it. And so then they don't, they think it's just like an, any other transmitter on the market. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing how everybody I talk to that works with Yokogawa with the pressure product seems to have one of those stories. Um, I've, I've got one, for example, oh, we'll, we'll get to the real world example in a minute, but um, I've got one. Like, I mean, there was one customer that had, you know, 10 transmitters they were working with and uh, they don't have to calibrate them anymore. And basically they have a little more time on Friday afternoon to leave a little early. You know, it's just kind of funny. It's but, and you get used to hearing those kinds of things. How all these different customers have these stories about, yeah, we tried it, and and you know, our life changed even a little bit. Um, so yeah, yeah, exactly. So this was another. I, I found this to be a very. This is our last example. Very compelling uh, story. So this is a refinery in the real world, and this is a quote from the customer. Um, that I, it sounds like Natalie, you you worked on this. Did they put our transmitter basically right next to a competitor? They did. This particular customer, um, another large customer of uh, Yokogawa, um, they they did a side-by-side -side comparison of a basically R210 freestyle, which again is an unbalanced system, um, right next to a competitor um, that has what they call a tune system. Um, and they, they, they really, they were like, wow. I mean, like our, per, our system outperformed the competitor system, like by far. And it was, they were, they were extremely impressed, um, with that performance. So, you know, that's a, that's the kind of thing where it, it's always, it's always nice when you can show something on paper and, and promote it, but when you can get an actual customer to see that difference firsthand, that's, that makes a, that's a, that's a big deal. Um, nice. So, yeah, so that was, a, that was really exciting. Um, we're still working with them on some other applications and, um, you know, hoping to, hoping to get some other wins at that facility. But the, the, this was a, a great, a, a great quote that was, that was unsolicited. They just, they just told mm -hmm. us about it, right? So, you know, we've spent a good amount of time here talking about all the technical passion that we have that we that we you know Yokogawa pours into these products, um, and it's really nice to hear it pay off when the customer is way more satisfied. Um, you know, there were a lot of little things we mentioned about how we compensate the capillaries, we temperature, uh, we compensate the whole system. We've got the the transmitter that's dynamically compensated. All those little things. Uh, they can add up to far superior performance. And it's really nice when the customer tells you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad that we got this totally unsolicited quote. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we want to we wanna stick to the half hour format that we have. Um, so I'm Andrew and this is Natalie. Um, if you would like to reach out to us, here's our information. Um, thank you, Natalie. Thanks so much for, for joining me today. Well, thank you, Andrew. It was really, really a, a fun time Yeah. for a Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Friday, everybody. Get out there and uh, go home soon. But uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself. So thanks, guys. We'll talk later. Thank you.